We are looking at a photograph titled A Harvest of Death, taken in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, in July 1863 during the Civil War. The photographer, Timothy O'Sullivan, worked as a field operator for Alexander Gardner, who managed a photographic team in the war and ran a photo studio out of Washington, D.C. After the war, Gardner published 100 photographs, including A Harvest of Death, in a two-volume album he titled The Photographic Sketchbook of the War. The album contains images of military camps, officers, notable sites, and the war's devastating casualties. With their heavy cameras, wet plate collodion negatives, and long exposure times, Civil War photographers could not capture motion or dynamic fighting. Instead, they concentrated on the moments before and after battle. Each photograph in the sketchbook is preceded by a descriptive text to guide the viewer's interpretation of the image. The Harvest of Death text draws our eye to visual details in the image, which underscore the lonely and unceremonious nature of the soldiers' deaths. It says that the fallen soldiers are missing their shoes and that their pockets have been turned inside out. And it explains this is done out of necessity. Shoes are, quote, always removed from the feet of the dead on account of the pressing need of the survivors, end quote. Canteens, cups, and letters that may identify the soldiers are scattered about, but much of this debris, it says, is buried with the bodies in nameless graves far from home and kindred. The text ends with a proclamation that tells us why we should look upon such a gory photograph. Quote, such a picture conveys a useful moral. It shows the blank horror and reality of war in opposition to its pageantry. Here are the dreadful details. Let them aid in preventing such another calamity falling upon the nation. In other words, the photograph shows us that war is not heroic, it's ghastly, and this image should serve as a reminder so that the country does not fall into war again. Though we know a harvest of death as a photograph today, in the period, this image was much more widely seen as an illustration when it ran in Harper's Weekly, a popular illustrated newspaper. At this time, photographs could not be directly reproduced in newspapers. Instead, newspapers printed engravings made after photographs. A team of artists and engravers would trace the image onto a block, carve it, and print from that. But the artists often took liberties and changed details of the image during the process. Looking at the photo and newspaper engraving side by side, we see the same basic composition of bodies strewn across a battlefield. The same bend in the knee in the figure in the center foreground. The illustrators dutifully copied small details from the photograph, like the horses and men in the background. And the images have similar horizon lines, except the clouds, which were often blown out in 19th century photographs, are more well-defined in the illustration. But there are also significant differences, like the broken wagon wheel and slain horses, which are in the illustration, but not in the original photograph. And there are small changes, too. In the engraving, the illustrators turn the face of the soldier in the foreground away from the viewer in order to make it a slightly less gruesome image. They also added a cap and rifle next to the soldier's head. We know from the photograph and Gardner's text in the sketchbook album that the soldier's shoes were taken and pockets were turned inside out, so it's unlikely that a rifle and hat would have been left behind. Though many changes were made in translating a photograph into an engraving, Credit lines in Harper's Weekly always made sure to note when the source image was a photograph. This was a way to testify to the accuracy of the image. Notably, Harper's Weekly does not credit Timothy O'Sullivan, who took the photograph, but rather Alexander Gardner, who led the photographic team. This is perhaps because the accompanying article in Harper's reads like an advertisement for Gardner's studio in Washington, D.C., it praises both the fidelity and artistry of photography. Quote, the present perfection of the art of photography enables an illustrated paper like ours to depict persons and events with the utmost precision, end quote. This statement is remarkable not only because of all the changes the illustrators made, but also because photography was not widely perceived as an art in this period. Today, A Harvest of Death is revered both as a work of art and a documentary record, it has undoubtedly influenced the way people have visualized and understood the Civil War 
since the 19th century. Thank you.